You are listening to The Ramblers, the official podcast of Rambling Ever On. Episode one, a trip to the 80s. (laughs) You're not not for real, are you? Yeah. (laughs) You found it. And I'm I'm embarrassed that it took us to number six to actually pick this movie. Um, I had a smile on my face from the minute the movie started until it ended. Youth groups everywhere agree with you, Nathan. She's totally serious. Oh, okay. So much for this podcast being successful. Yeah, it's my choice, Lost Boys. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. All right, so now Brandon's turn. Oh, good. Man. No, it's, it's just... Nobody's even seen it. You guys should, like, yeah, you should watch it. Few of us had seen it. My wife likes it, and I have not seen it. So this weekend, that's my, I'll watch The Lost Boys. I, I, I like her even more. <laughs> <laughs> my next pick is from kind of a completely different way of looking at things and this is just straight nostalgia like a Pee Wee Herman way of looking at things what like a Pee Wee Herman way of looking at things no that's a that's another way of looking at things that I don't understand but this is just nostalgia if you watch it now that you could pick it apart there's lots of holes in it but I'm gonna go with the Goonies for yes. my second pick uh, to me I don't even, when I watch it as an adult, I don't even care the cheesiness, the holes, you know, the, the, it's, it's just, I, it just makes me, it just, it's just so, so nostalgic. And uh, I mean, it's funny. Uh, it's, you know, it's got that eighties music. Um, it's, it's got pirates, you know, pirate treasure and it's got Sean Astin as a kid. I mean, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. That is a cool movie. That is a great yeah. choice. It, it, to me, that that is kind of like Stranger Things and uh, Super 8. It just makes me feel that nostalgic, like, man, I'm a kid again kind of feeling. So mm-hmm. yep. it's got to be in there for me. For Absolutely. The Absolutely. That was a good one. It's a good choice. Good choice. Nathan? All right. <clears throat> it's time to break the rules. It's going to get weird now. Let's do it. <laughs> So hey, I'm, I'm, if, I'm if you really are going to break the rules, we can veto this. Uh, no, I want the movie that came out in the '90s. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so this this movie it came out in 1993 in the U.S., but 1988 in Japan. I know exactly the movie you're talking about. Okay, it's okay, that's fine. The saddest movie that I have ever watched. Yep. But it is one of the best movies I have ever watched. On my list. Grave of the Firefly. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's so sad, though, man. It's hard to rewatch. Yeah, it is. I watched it about three years ago again. And tell us about it. Why would you pick the saddest movie you ever made? It's just, it's so good. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, anime set in World War II, uh, teenage uh, boy and his sister. Uh, mom's dead, dad's off fighting, no way of, uh, of knowing what's going on, people dying all over the place, they're starving, uh, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful story, uh, despite how, maybe because of how sad it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some it say is. Miyazaki's best film, some say. It's beautifully animated, and it's, I don't think at least U.S. audiences, we hadn't really seen a lot of examples of animated films that were not made for kids. And then not that it's like a really, it's not like a crude movie or anything like that. It's just such a heavy thematic type of, type of story that you're not going to watch that with like your five-year-old and have little songs in it. Like it's, it's, a, it's a hard, dramatic story, but it's wonderfully told. Yeah, I completely agree. But it's worth watching. Um, as you can able to process it, yeah, for sure, for sure, it's a good choice, Nathan. It is off the beaten path. It's not. Uh, I just think it's funny that Pee. This is our eclectic nature. Pee Wee and Grave of the Fireflies are both on this list. Stop trying to make yourself feel better about Pee Wee. 
<laughs> okay. So does Nathan go again? Yep. Nathan, oh. you're up. I was not prepared for this. I know. Um, <laughs> it's a snake draft. Uh, my, my list is on my phone, which is currently recording me. Uh, let's see. I am going to pick, it's not the best Star Wars movie, but it's my favorite when I was growing up as a kid, and that's Return of the Jedi. Wow. Good choice. More puppets. Yeah, that's good. I love, I love the Ewoks. Wow. Um, not a Jedi fan. I mean, I like it because it's part of the original movies. It's much better than the trash fire that came out after that. But, um, yeah, Jedi definitely took a step into the 80s. Like, uh, well, I guess a step into the hokiness of the 80s for me, definitely. It's still really good, though. Yeah. I, no, I agree. I mean, yeah, it, it belongs on the list. <laughs> definitely. I, I love it. I mean, I, I don't think it's as good as, as Empire, but it's it's a good conclusion to that trilogy. And, mm -hmm. you know, the opening sequence with Jabba's palace and rescuing Han is fantastic. And then all the stuff between Luke and Vader and the Emperor are just, it's so well done. I mean, that is just, all, that I agree. That is all well done. I think it's all the extras that got shoved into the crevices that, you know, it's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> what? A, a wall has a crevice. You shove putty into it. Um, Brandon. Lots of things have, things have crevices, though. <laughs> Foreheads have crevices. <laughs> we, we don't have to talk about all of them. I'm working my way down. <laughs> um, Brandon. The next pick is kind of hard because now it's just getting into, like, like my top two or three, of course, some of them are already taken, you know, um, Ghostbusters, uh, Empire Strikes Back, uh, uh, Back to the Future. So now it's getting into just kind of like, I don't really have a real order. Um, so it's kind of hard to pick the next one. But I think for me personally, and this is just a personal choice, I'm going to have to go with Karate Kid. <laughs> because Good one. I think if, if I think of my childhood, the two movies that make me think of that the most are Goonies and Karate Kid, for sure. And so, to me, the 80s and, and innocence and childhood, that just, that's kind of all together for me. And, I mean, um, that movie, it's, I haven't seen it in several years. So, it might, it might just be terrible. But I'm going more on just like, you know, childhood memory. Uh, more it's than not me. terrible. It's great. No. The only thing that hasn't aged well on that movie is how high Danielson pulls his pants up. <laughs> I mean, he wears them really high. No, that was that was the style. That was the style. It's coming back. Right. Get ready. Especially for him, he he carried it to an extreme, even yeah. for the times. Yeah. But. But that crane kick, man. I mean, awesome. Yeah. It's it's awesome. great. It's yeah, a great movie. The, the the villains, you know, yes. Johnny sweep the yeah. leg, you know, uh, uh, wax on, wax off. I mean, catching the flies with the chopsticks. I mean, just like the soundtrack. I yep. mean, put him in a body bag. Put him in a body bag, body Johnny. Bag. I mean, yeah, I, I haven't seen it in several years, but just talking about it just makes me, you know, feel nostalgic. So I, I just had to put Karate Kid up there. Awesome. When our when our family got a uh, a VCR for the first time in 1985, that was one of the first movies we rented, and we watched it probably like I don't know how long. We, I think we had it for like three or four days or whatever the rental time was, but we probably watched it like ten times. <laughs> and then we held our own karate tournaments. Yes, thereafter. I think yeah. every young boy who watched it did. I mean, yeah. yeah. And you were there, everybody perfected the crane kick. Yes. Yep. That's right. That's right. Well, good choice, Brandon. I'm going to go, I was going to go with something. I decided to be a little more mature with my choice instead of the thing I was going to choose. Um, but we just showed this to our kids the other day. Um, I think we're just going through a phase of showing them all the movies we grew up watching. Um, this is also getting a sequel after 36 years. So uh, it's pretty cool. But um, the story of Atreyu and uh, the never-ending story. 
I think that it is. Yeah. Um, I remember watching the nothing, right? The the servant of the nothing. I, I just watched it. I don't remember his name, but I'm sure Phil's going to correct me here and tell me who the name is. But <laughs> he comes out of the woods and the eyes and the teeth. And I remember as a kid being absolutely terrified. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, just just the excitement of of everything fell apart. I think it was the first movie I watched where n- the the good guys didn't win. The nothing destroyed everything, and you're like. What does that mean? But she had the grain of sand, and this is where everything's going to come back. And I just remember as a kid, you were used to movies. Well, the good guys win. It's going to be okay. And that movie, it didn't feel like it was going to be okay at the end, and then it all grew back. So, yeah, never great choice. Great choice. Yeah. Yeah, that movie messed me up as a child, no doubt. I had a hard time watching it, but as I got older, I I learned to appreciate it more. It would be on my my top ten of the eighties for sure. Well, I'm glad everyone's happy yeah. with my yeah. show. It's a it trade, especially. The train! The train! <laughs> the, my the kids are around of, saying that now. So. <laughs> the idea of kids sitting in, in the attic reading a fantasy novel and the fate of the world depends on it. I mean, that, that yeah. was my good. <laughs> That's right. That was really good. That's exactly right. I mean, that is <laughs> really cool. And don't get me wrong, I hated that kid. Even as a kid, I was like, you're a punk, man. Just... <laughs> but yeah but that that was us that was us yes very much i was i was closer to him than i was a tray you yeah <laughs> so, um daniel or gowdy daniel or gowdy i don't know yeah i'm up i'm up i'm gonna go with 1987 the mel brooks i think pinnacle space balls ah yeah yeah oh man I uh, I can't tell you how many times I rented that from the local video store. If I were ever homesick or anything, it was always that. It was always Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, it was always, you know, Independence Day. But as far as movies that fall in the 80s, uh, Spaceballs is right there. It's just a pitch perfect Star Wars parody. I can't imagine anybody doing a parody any better and it was mel brooks i think one of his finest works you could argue that it's his best um young frankenstein's up there too but um spaceballs was just great had rick morel rick moranis as dark helmets Mm -hmm. um just just some really great comedic talent in the movie and um i think it just nails it it's just great i think it's just fantastic yeah I made the mistake of turning that on with my grandfather one day as a young <laughs> child. And, uh, he was not as impressed with it. And Probably remember, not it. That may have been one of my first memories of the whole, like, <laughs> you're sort of watching and the whole time you're going. <laughs> <laughs> they would say something, they would do something, and he was just back there like. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the that moment was... in, the, in the movie where they're watching the movie in the movie, you know, as it's going, as it's happening, yeah. you know, for my eight year old brain, I thought these people have to be 180 IQ geniuses. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> it turns out they're all idiots. Yes. But... <laughs> I think my brain melted. <laughs> I love, Daniel, that you said there we would go to the video store. <laughs> yeah. a video. I mean, that, right. that, Self is is cool to think about because it's probably been over 10 years since I've gone to a video store yep. yeah video but that that in itself even brings back you know the memories of you going to a video store and picking out a movie I mean even that is like people some young people watching this are like have no clue what that even is yeah I them. <laughs> uh, Gowdy um I'll uh I'm pretty much now to the ones that I prefer more than the ones I think are most deserving or whatever, but I will go with, uh, uh, three amigos, um, because that movie made me laugh probably more than any other in the eighties. I don't know if I've ever really ranked comedies in the eighties before, but just like the other, like y'all were saying about Fletch and the burbs and all that, it's just so quotable. Um, it definitely had the, the comedic talent and the whole thing with the misunderstanding of, of the two <laughs> cultures, just, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I thought that was funny in the eighties, but I find it twice as funny as an adult now, um, with, uh, stop El Guapo <laughs> <laughs> and the El Guapo is just like, a um, it's just like, a, a Biff to me. He's just, he's just so, 
he's quotable and he's like uh, almost cartoonish, but in the perfect sort of way. And I just, it was another one of those that we, we watched probably 25 or 30 times in a span of a few years in the eighties. So I love, love three amigos. I don't know if any of you guys follow not Kenny Rogers on social media, but on Cinco de Mayo, he posted and said 50, 158 years ago today, three brave <laughs> Americans defeated El Guapo at the battle of Santa Poco to give Mexico its independence. And it is typical of his humor. It's if you don't follow him, you really need to He he's a funny guy. Every year that one of my brothers turned 33, we texted the others to say, today he is 33 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good choice. That's a funny, funny, funny. And three all-star comedians. I mean. But at that time. I mean, yeah. I don't know where you get three bigger comedians than that. But, I mean, what would that be like today? Who, what three comedians? Jerry. Will Ferrell would have to be in it. I mean, you've got these, like, famous comedians together in a, in a movie. Pretty good. Awesome. Um, yes. I lost track again. Phil? It's my turn. Yes. And I am, man, I am struggling with my next pick. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with, I'm just going to go with the one that I had ranked the highest when I did my list. Um, I feel like it's fallen out of favor somewhat in recent years, um, but I still really love the movie. Um, Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. Okay. Love that pick, yeah. Got to go to the Piggly Wiggly. I just, I, <laughs> I just on, love the show. And I, and I shop at Piggly Wiggly, so we're, we're, we're kindred spirits. But I, lo I just love the relationship between the two main characters and how you watch them form that relationship throughout the film and then where it ends up. I mean, I think it's just a beautiful, quiet gentle type of movie but it's it's very well done it is well done the story is really good i think my thing is i wasn't doing much drama back in the 80s you know yeah. so. really but it was late 80s so you'd have been no i and i watched it even as a teenager i mean i watched it again but yeah my my, my tastes were very much uh well you well, when we, when we actually, we talked about this and we, I mean, I, I kind of, I think everybody has their own individual way that they, they came up with their list, but I think some people were like, these are the movies that I loved in the eighties at the time they came out. Yeah. And then other of these movies, it's like, well, I didn't see this movie until I was like 20, but it came out in the eighties and I love this movie. So I'm picking the movies from the eighties that I love the most. Now Driving Miss Daisy, I probably saw sometime in the early mid nineties, maybe. Right. Same here. Yeah, same. That's right. So I was probably mid to late high school uh, when I first saw it, and I loved it then. Um, so I don't believe I saw it in the 80s. I don't think I would have had a chance to watch it when it, when it first came out. But but I do know. think Morgan Freeman is spectacular. I mean, you know, I think that solidified in my mind who he is and what he can do, definitely. It's good. Miguel. All right. Um, so I've got two – picks so let me now listen time out we've been going for an hour so do we want can we make the fourth round or are we going five no i think we're just gonna do four right like if we go five i'm running out of movies i do four so what that means is that mike's second pick is the last pick is that no because we've only done three no and it's just mike, yeah mike picks it'll, twice. it'll go back down one more one more time. It's one more round, time. yeah. Hey, Mr. Math, Gowdy, I'm good, yeah. okay? I can count. I didn't even read. I didn't yeah. have to use the other hand. That was logic, not math. Okay, I'm good at I'm pretty good at that, too. <laughs> Man, this is That's... tough. Um, I'm going to uh, – there's, like, three or four that I want to put on here, but I think a couple of you might pick one of the ones, so I'm going to leave it. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Fletch Lives. Um, Phil already picked Fletch. Wow. Uh, Fletch. Fletch Lives is the sequel. I actually saw it before the original. Um, it's the one we watched a lot as kids, more than the than the original, actually. Uh, it's not quite as good, but it, it gets a bad rap for being a terrible sequel, but it's actually really funny. It's just about as good as the original. It's not quite as good, but still really funny. Nice. Um, Fletch is on the list. And so, yeah, it definitely um, it definitely has to be on here for me. So that's my first pick. Um, discuss amongst yourselves. 
Yeah. Okay, nothing. All right, all right. I'll move ahead. Uh, Love it. Calculus <laughs> engine. Yeah. Great yeah. secondary character, supporting character in the in the movie. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I love Flesh Lives. I mean, I'm, it's it's very quotable too, and just yeah, it's great. Um, and then my second one, uh, so my last pick, then it will be uh, Field of Dreams. Ooh, great choice. Um, gonna go more dramatic. Um, I, it's just it doesn't really make sense. Of course, uh, it's weird. <laughs> like many of Kevin um, movies, but <laughs> right, it, and it kind of just. You know, there's a lot of reasons why it shouldn't work, um, but it's just great. I mean, it just it just works for some reason, and it, it's just one of those uh, really emotional movies that I think appeals to, to guys a lot, uh, I guess, because it's about sports and it's about fathers and sons and all of that, um, but also very quotable and just very a great, quotable. a yeah. great drama. Um, so, yeah, that's my, that'll be my last pick then. Great choice. And ironically, the last choice for you and the last good movie that Kevin Costner made. So <laughs> it's good. It's good. I disagree with that, oh. uh, but that's another, another point. Hey, what'd you say, Phil? What would be? What? I said what? that was false. That was a false statement. Okay. I thought you were naming a Kevin Costner movie. That oh, was good he's got so many good movie. movies. Okay. Good put, good pick, Mike. I've always liked that movie. Yeah, it's a good Thank one. You, Brandon. I'm not even yeah. I've never even been a huge baseball fan, but I've always loved that movie. I just I don't know why. Yeah, it just it works. Yeah. It does. And I um, celebrate Kevin Costner's entire catalog. So. <laughs> <laughs> just just for the record. <laughs> Had to get that in there. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh Phil. All last right. Pick. My last pick, and I, I I assume somebody else might pick it, but I don't want to take that chance. I don't want it to not be on this list. So my last pick is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, great. Yeah. The late, great John Candy. I mean, I already wrote about it for Rambling Ever On, so if you anybody who's watching or listening to this, you can just go read my review of it. Um, it was around Thanksgiving of last year. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's, you know, it's more than funny. It's hilarious. Candy is about he, – he played basically one type of character – most of the time, but this was like the perfect, the perfect distillation of who John Candy was, was this film. He could have been the most obnoxious character ever, but somehow he's still, you still like him, yep. even though he is awful at times um, and disgusting. And then there's just such a heart to that movie that I think until recently, I think was kind of overlooked. Um, People kind of viewed it as like, you know, the buddy comedy and they, you know, odd couple and everybody remembers it from the scene at the car rental place where Steve Martin kind of loses his mind. But that that movie has got such huge, such a huge heart, um, particularly toward the end. And you got to see kind of what's going on behind the scenes of the character. So, yeah, it's I think it deserved to be on our list. So that was the first sucker punch. Good pick. I got a definite sucker punch with like funny, funny, funny. Oh, like this is, yeah, reveal, the big reveal. Um, I don't know who goes next. Gowdy. Gowdy. All right, so I've, I've held this in. I've held the crazy end to the very end, okay? But <laughs> I, I, got, I got to put it out there. I, I'm thinking at least a couple of you would, would likely pick this too, but I don't want to take any chances. So I love the movie Labyrinth. I love that movie. I have loved that movie for sure. four sure. years. <laughs> You stole it from me. I tell you what. I should never have said David Bowie. I should never have said David Bowie. He's been Bowie. hinting. He's been hinting the whole time. Yeah, I know. You knew what my <laughs> last pick was going to be. Hey, don't worry. I got to back up. Jennifer Connelly was the first real major crush I ever had. But the the best part about that movie is like the is how weird it is because that was my that's always been my my mo. So like when she goes to the I, I don't remember I didn't look up the words or whatever the official terms, but when she goes into the in the world and those pink things are trying to take the, her head off and they can't take her head off and they say her head doesn't come off. That's weird. I love that kind of stuff and the the chili down with the wild mm -hmm. gang and the you remind me of the babe. All that okay. stuff. My wheelhouse. Isn't the power. I love it. I, I, that probably more than Back to the Future and, and, and any of the others. That's the movie that I, that I watched the most in the 80s. We just showed the girls that as well. Um, not as big of a hit as The NeverEnding Story. 
<laughs> but we were in the middle of moving this, to this new house, and Alicia said, that's what I feel like, the woman <laughs> with the, all the junk on her back. She's like, that's what I feel like in life. So movie still has applica- it's still applicable. Yeah. I just like that pick because of how it makes you feel. To yes. me, that, as, as a kid in the 80s, that's what it's all about for me. So just, just hearing you say how it makes you feel is, is, to me, I'm like, that's an awesome pick then, if that just kind of but you joke back on those memories. You know, Gaddy, you joke about Marty and uh, Doc's relationship. So many red flags about Labyrinth. I mean, it's like, <laughs> nah, they're not going to be making, making a sequel of that one anytime soon. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be that way, though. I mean, it's a whole different world, even more than Back to the Future is. It's true. It's true. But, um, Daniel, I think. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I was on mute there. Um, yeah, I, I'm having so much trouble trying to pick. Uh, do you go the camp route for your final pick? Do you go uh, just personal favorites, all this stuff? I think I'm just going to land on something that's really, I think, a solid pick, even though it is divisive in its nature, Blade Runner. Oh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that out there. And, uh, you bad. know, I – I went I went a little squirrely at the beginning and kind of ended up a little serious. So I guess that I guess it all kind of balances out. Um, it's a it's a very divisive film. I feel like it's people either love it or they hate it. Um, I don't. There's not really much room for middle ground in a movie like that. And um, but I I love you know Harrison Ford is just tremendous. The uh, the soundtrack, the atmosphere of the movie, and it is a movie that heavily depends on atmosphere and things that are unsaid as much as it, as much as it lays the story out. So, um, but I think it's just a, uh, just a great film and it really made a uh, really deep impact on me as far as uh, art is concerned at, at a pretty young age, I think. So. That's awesome. Yeah, Blade Runner would have been my, my final pick if you hadn't picked it. Um, and I, I think we should all agree that Harrison Ford was the, the king of the eighties. Mm-hmm. Star Wars and Indiana Jones and yeah, yeah. Blade Runner. Uh, yeah, good pick, Dan. It is a good pick. An atmosphere. For I sure. mean, Ralph Mac- Ralph Macchio is right there with him. But <laughs> yeah. He, he's close, close <laughs> yeah, he was like 34 years old playing a high school freshman or something. <laughs> that just shows his range. Yeah. So, so that's was, slightly yeah. exaggerated. Just Pee Wee was playing high schooler as well, I think. Pee-wee. I, I don't even want to. <laughs> Is it my turn? Are we close to the end of this? Yeah. We're close to the end. Three more. Three more. Who's the three? You, Brandon, and Nathan. Oh, me, Brandon, and Nathan. Okay. My last pick. No. no. My last pick begins. <laughs> it begins with two tragic deaths. It's sad. It's heavy. Much like uh, Phil chose Driving Miss Daisy and the heart and the, the drama. I know, really. I'm really scared now. <laughs> Two deaths start out. It was a bridge. It was a bridge accident. Um, and these two people find themselves haunting their own country residence. And a new, new family moves in. But they have a friend. They have a friend that helps them out. And his name is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> um, and I don't think I had to make the decision between quality and my personal preference. I think that they're both there. <laughs> This final pick. Um, Beetlejuice, Michael Keaton was terrifying, funny, disgusting, all at the same time in equal parts. It was like, I was going to say something that's a little bit sexual, so I won't say it. But equal parts, um, it scared me badly. There's still something to this day that when they shrink down and go to the, uh, the model, like I still see the grass, like, you know, the, the plastic grass and the buildings and the roach in the corner. Hey, um, yeah, Beetlejuice. Good. Someone else tell me why Beetlejuice is a great movie. It's full on Tim Burton. Yes. It is, it is just as Tim Burton as you can get. And I love the fact that Keaton plays that character and close to the same time he plays Batman. Yeah. Batman, Batman yeah. Like he's, so polar opposite type of characters. Yeah, he pulls them both off, but yep. yeah. It's... And Winona Ryder, yeah. as dark as she is, it was a very enjoyable, you know, was, she was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. So, 
That was my last choice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Brandon? This is so hard to, to pick. I feel like maybe we should have saved our best for last. but That's what I did. The other way. <laughs> I, so now I'm just kind of left with, with movies that I really like that were made in the 80s and I've seen a lot of times. And so it's, it's, it's really hard to pick, but probably I'm going to go uh, – I'll, I'll have to go with Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, it's a good choice. Solid. Good choice. Yeah. I, just, I just think that movie is just fun and – uh, I've seen it lots of times. It has been a few years since I've seen it, but Matthew Broderick was pretty a big part of the '80s. You know, War Games, and um, I know I know some other things. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but um, yeah, I don't know. That that movie's just makes me think about. Now I probably didn't see it till the early '90s for the first time. You know, being like a young teenager, but we watched it a ton, and. Yeah, that's my last pick. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was the first time I saw the whole break the fourth wall, right? Is it fourth wall? Yeah, or third wall? yeah fourth wall. Fourth wall. I think that movie still holds up, too. The comedy is still really funny. It's good. Yeah. This is Broderick's best role. Yeah. Easily. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Good choice. Nathan, bring us home. Land the plane. <laughs> I'm I'm last. Okay, I'm gonna throw out some honorable mentions. I love it. Um, <laughs> I thought about Transformers the movie. Oh, the uh, awesome soundtrack. Good. Um, Good. Return of the yeah. King. Yeah, you got the best you know song. Where there's a whip, there's a way. Where there's a whip. I had my kids singing that the other day. <laughs> I, I got them singing it. Wesley was all marching around singing where there's a whip. It's it's the best Tolkien film until the Hobbit movies came out, um, and then oh, he's an idiot. Don't listen to him. Yeah, I, I know he's baiting. He's baiting with comedy. Yeah. Like I know. Uh, he's stepping the bear trap. In the '80s, we finally got a wonderful sequel to one of the greatest movies of all time, in Return to Oz. Anybody? Yeah, where were yeah. you at the beginning of this when I was naming Pee Wee? Is that your pick or is that an honorable nope. mention? Nope, that's honorable mention. Okay. <laughs> that movie scared me as a child. Return to Oz. I was li- li- yeah, like seriously scared. Yeah, it's yeah. creepy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, my actual pick the Christmas classic, The Christmas Story. Yep. Watch uh, nice. Every Christmas. Yeah. I love it because it's, it's, it's so much more true to real life and mm-hmm. how people really act around Christmas um, and it's just it's a hilarious movie we, we finally let the uh, older kids watch it this year and they loved it that is a great movie that is a really good one there's a reason they do the marathon right because mm-hmm. it's worth it doggone it it's worth it that movie always makes me think of Bethany because we would always watch it every Christmas and we would watch it like you know three times <laughs> So I I have memories. I have great memories about that movie. I love it. I love it. Well, good choice, Nathan. Way to bring us home. Um, This has been about an hour and 10 minutes. So a little bit longer than what we had planned, but. Split into two parts. Yeah, we'll split it. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I'm going to send it to somebody else to split into two parts. (laughs) I I did my job. Okay. Nathan can do all the cutting. Um, No, seriously, I think this was fun. Um, Just to see you guys' faces is always fun. And to share the wealth of entertainment that we get to enjoy on a regular basis with the rest of the world. We're really changing <laughs> lives here. We're really changing lives. So uh, for this inaugural uh, podcast, webcast, Zoom cast, we're signing off and uh, hope everybody has a, has a good week. All right. Good to talk to you guys. We'll see y'all. See ya. All right. <laughs>